this is Wade from High Tech Legion, and this is an overview and tutorial of the PowerDirectory 11 video editing software from Cyberlink. Now they've designed this to be friendly to both the consumer and the professional with an easy to use interface, as well as many powerful features. This is an update to the PowerDirector 10 suite, but they've added some features and also improved on some of them. On the splash screen here, we have several options that we can change. The first of which is the project aspect ratio. We can choose 16 by 9 for widescreen or 4 by 3 for full screen as well as three different editors. The slideshow creator allows us to quickly import a bunch of photos and then create a slideshow from them automatically and the easy editor allows us to import video and photos as well as make some minor adjustments to the videos to quickly create a video. We also have the full featured editor, which has access to the easy editor, and you can make a slideshow with it as well. On the bottom of the splash screen, we have a checkbox here where we can tell the program to always go into the full featured editor, which is what I'm going to be showing you in this overview. Now that we have the PowerDirector 11 screen up, you can see that we have a fairly simple interface. We have our media library here, as well as a preview window, and our timeline here supporting up to a hundred separate timelines. Here we have the actual ruler with the times marked on it, and access to that magi magic movie wizard that we saw on the splash screen. On the left here, with these buttons, we have access to the effects and other objects, particles, text that can be inserted, transitions, an audio mixer so that you can alter the volumes of different things, as well as a place where you can do some narration. On the top we have our menu, it's typical file edit view menu, a quick save button, a button that we can change our aspect ratio quickly, and access to the preferences for the program. If we go back to our media manager and look at our uh, samples from Cyberlink that are included with the program, we can see we have a lot of mixed media here, some regular JPEGs, as well as an MPEG movie, a WMV movie, and some MPO files that are marked with 3D. That's one of the new features with PowerDirector 11 is it has full support for 3D images and video. If we quickly drop a few things into the timeline by dragging them in, we can quickly create a movie here. Um, if we drop something on top of another, we can either overwrite that section or we can insert it and move the clips. Then if we wanted to, say, delete this tram WMV from the middle, we can do that by hitting the delete, and we can remove it and leave a space to keep everything lined up, or we can remove it and tighten the uh, clips all back together. That's one of the new things that is included with this. If they call it ripple editing, where you can easily add and remove things and keep things lined up so if you have an audio track or a narration everything stays the way it's supposed to without having to drag everything around when you make changes. One of the other new features is the ability to change hotkeys in the program. We can do that by bringing down the edit menu and going to keyboard hotkeys customize. Here we can change any of the default hotkeys as well as add hotkeys for certain areas that developers didn't feel everybody was going to use. This is a very nice feature since in the past they were locked down to uh, whatever the developer thought was useful. 
Also, we have hotkey sets in here, which allows you to set a custom profile, which is great if you have multiple users using the same program. If we go back into our timeline here, we can click on this video nature MPEG video that we added and go to the fix enhance section which allows us to make some adjustments using uh, lighting, a stabilizer, video denoise, audio denoise, as well as video enhancement and color adjustment giving you all these different sections uh, bumping the exposure or easily resetting it to what it was before. One of the nice things that PowerDirector allows you to do is if you have a need to do some more advanced color tuning um, you can use the color director program if you own that as well simply by clicking the button here and it'll load up that software for you where you can make your adjustments. In color director we can make global adjustments to the image itself like turning the whole video a little blue tint or we can also take little sections that we mask and use motion tracking um, and um, change those colors say we'll tint that little section yellow um, and also the gradient tool allows you to pick a section of the video in this case I'm going to pick a small section up at the top so you can see uh, what the changes are and we'll tint this purple so as you can see throughout the whole video we've got that gradient tool there tinting the top of it different alright and when we close the color director program out it will automatically bring us back into power director with the changes that we made to the video already there. Okay, I'm gonna actually delete this and go back to the original version of it before I made those funky. Next, let's add some effects to uh, the Nature MPEG sample here. We can uh, drop an effect in here and see how the video changes to a metallic uh, effect since that's the one we chose. Um, if we delete that one we'll drop this duochrome in and it changes the whole video to a totally different look. We also have particle effects so we can add like bubbles to this and when we play it the bubbles float up and reflect the image of the video itself. Okay, if I get rid of the bubble effect here we can go to the particle room and drop a another little clip here from Cyberlink and now we have planets in front of our nature clip. Uh, you can also apply effects to these such as this one which is actually uh, GPU accelerated hence it why it has little NVIDIA logo in the corner. So when we play it we now have fireworks on this screen. Um, if we wanted to extend that into the nature video we could just simply click on it and drag it down the timeline and when we play the nature clip it'll now show up in the middle there as well so let's get rid of this as well um, since it's distracting 
if we wanted to we can go to this T for the title screens and we can take this title screen here and drop it into the video double clicking on it will bring up a place where we can customize it um, change the title here to high tech legion and fonts anything you really want to change uh, the look of this you can we save it and now when we play our movie we have a title screen for like DVDs if you're producing a custom DVD or something like that the transition room has all kinds of transitions so say we want to put a transition between our planet intro here to our um, nature MPEG we would put this in here uh, by clicking it and dragging it now we have a transition and when we play video it goes from the planet video to the nature MPEG sample quickly a little fanciness here we have our audio mixing room again so if we click on this we can alter the volume of the audio track if we had another video down here you'd be able to change that as well to try to balance out the audio the way you'd like it once you're done with your video you can go to the produce button and here we have the option to produce the standard 2D video a 3D video send it back to various devices as well as support for social media such as Facebook YouTube Dailymotion Vimeo um, in various qualities if we choose say the MPEG 4 format we can click this drop down here and you'll notice that this has support for 4K resolutions. That is another new feature in PowerDirector 11 and is great to keep up with the technology that's available out there for those large screens. Also is the ability to create a disk with this. Um, we can change menus, do 2D discs as well as 3D discs with DVD, Blu-ray, um, and AVC HD, as well as video CDs if um, you're just making one of those real quick. Some of the other new features that are included in PowerDirector 11 is the ability to detect scenes. Um, so if we click on this one, it'll automatically create several scenes based on how the images change um, we can also click on the content aware button which is a new feature and it will bring up analyze the video and bring up a screen where we can see all the sections that zoom pan faces um, and motion in this case there's not too much going on here so the only thing that's detected is the motion of these um, plants floating around it's very useful for making some quick cuts of uh, video say you took a, a long video of a wedding and you wanted to pull it into into this and do the content aware editing you could find just the faces and maybe make a quick video for people to to view and enjoy one of the other things that cyberlink has done is they've improved the GPU acceleration um, with this version 
we have native support for 64-bit OS's as well as leveraging multiple GPUs for as well as the CPU for producing video at a higher s speed. Some of the other new features that Cyberlink has included in this version of the software is the ability to detect scenes. If we click on this button, we can see that this video was broken down into three scenes where the image is changed. We also can go to Content Aware Editing where the program will analyze the video and show us various things such as where it zooms, uh, pans, faces in the video, motion, shaky video, and poor lighting, and right from within this screen it'll offer you the ability to fix the shaky video and lighting if it's detected. As you can see, there's not that much going on in this short clip, so we just have a section of motion here where these plants were rocking back and forth. Um, if we wanted to, we can choose this by right clicking and adding it to our selected list and then it will show up here and we can just simply insert that into our video. So now we just have that little small section of the video in there. So you can see that that could be very powerful if you shot, say, a wedding and you just wanted to pick out a bunch of faces. You could click through the content aware editing and select just certain people's faces, etc. You know. One of the other features that Cyberlink has improved is this preview window here. We have the ability to undock it by clicking this button making it so that we can move it onto a second screen if we'd like. Uh, also, we can view it in full screen mode uh, with controls here, and we can exit out of that by clicking this red X. Uh, and it can be docked back into the program by clicking this button in the top right corner. This has been an overview and tutorial of the new PowerDirector 11 software from Cyberlink. I hope you enjoyed the video. And for the full review, please be sure to see www.hitechlegion.com. Thank you.